Starship has been a key to unlocking new doorways in deep space exploration for SpaceX specifically and humanity in general. As this spacecraft continues to be upgraded to newer, more advanced versions, it increasingly astonishes the entire world. While we are certainly familiar with SpaceX's Starship 5-2, Elon Musk has recently revealed even more upgrades that are completely different from anything we've known before. So, what are these upgrades? How far do Elon Musk's revelations prove SpaceX's Starship is advancing? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Flight 8 is a replacement effort for the objectives that Starship Flight 7 inadvertently missed during its January launch. This event holds great significance for the Starship program, as it will feature the latest version of Starship, Block 2, which SpaceX has just developed. Essentially, from what we know so far, the second-generation Starship, also known as Block 2, has been designed with larger fuel tanks, increasing volume by 25% compared to previous versions. The cargo bay near the top of the vehicle is slightly smaller than that of Starship Block 1. This upgrade brings SpaceX closer to testing more ambitious objectives with Starship, such as returning the vehicle or upper stage to the launch site from orbit. It is expected to be caught by the launch tower at Starbase, just like SpaceX previously did with the Super Heavy booster last year. Officials also aim to put Starship into operation for launching Starlink internet satellites and demonstrating in-orbit refueling, a capability that would enable future Starship missions to the Moon and Mars. Other modifications in this upgrade had been revealed earlier, but seeing Ship 34 unveiled in full detail still left me in awe. It truly looks incredible. I can only imagine how astonishing its performance will be. Elon Musk also posted on X, sharing pristine images of SpaceX's latest Starship, saying, So good to see the improved forward flaps. For Starship version 2, SpaceX engineers have redesigned the flaps, reducing their size and repositioning them closer to the nose cone to better shield them from the intense heat during re-entry. This adjustment addresses the issue seen in last year's test flights, where onboard cameras showed flaps damaged by extreme heat. Additionally, engineers have installed rudimentary attachment points on the vehicle to assess their behavior under re-entry conditions, where external temperatures can reach 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,430 degrees Celsius. This is a preparation step for a flight test or a tower catch attempt, the latter being the ultimate goal Musk has mentioned, as perfecting the re-entry process is crucial before attempting to catch Starship with Mechazilla's arms. Furthermore, technicians have removed some heat shield tiles from specific areas of the vehicle to stress test vulnerable sections during landing. The most striking visual evidence of this is the strategically missing tiles across the Starship's body. These are believed to be experimental thinner metallic heat shield tiles with active cooling, which might be less brittle than the ceramic ones used elsewhere on the vehicle. Under bright lights, the heat shield appears somewhat uneven and patchy, leading some to think it looks worn out. However, in reality, it has undergone an extensive development process to be approved for launch. As Elon Musk explained on X, literally about a hundred experiments running simultaneously on that heat shield which is part of why it looks so patchy. Indeed, with around 100 experiments running simultaneously on the heat shield, it highlights the scale and complexity of SpaceX's approach. It suggests that the company isn't just testing a single solution, but is exploring a vast array of variables, material compositions, tile designs, attachment methods, cooling techniques, and more, all at once. This aligns with SpaceX's rapid iteration philosophy where parallel experimentation accelerates progress by quickly identifying what works and what doesn't. For Starship, a vehicle intended to re-enter Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds and land intact for immediate reuse, the heat shield must withstand temperatures exceeding 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,370 degrees Celsius, while maintaining structural integrity. Running dozens of experiments simultaneously reflects the urgency and ambition of achieving this goal. This tweet also connects to the broader context of Musk's recent statements and Starship's development trajectory. In late 2024, he expressed confidence in achieving a fully reusable heat shield in 2025, a milestone critical for rapid reuse, landing, refueling, and relaunching with minimal refurbishment. The hundred experiments could also include efforts to address known issues, such as tile adhesion, since tiles have detached in past flights, and fault tolerance, ensuring that a missing tile doesn't doom the spacecraft. Previously, we have also learned that SpaceX is exploring new heat shield concepts, 
In addition to metallic heat shields, SpaceX has increasingly mentioned the potential for active cooling methods, such as evaporative methane cooling or secondary protective layers beneath the tiles, which could be made of metal or any other material capable of shielding the spacecraft's structure without significantly increasing its weight. However, these new methods are still in the experimental phase and have not yet become a definitive replacement for ceramic tiles. So, what is the most suitable approach for Starship, especially considering that, at some point in the future, it will need to become a rapidly reusable spacecraft without requiring extensive refurbishment? To answer this, let's take a deeper look into the types of thermal protection materials commonly used. Heat shield materials are the cornerstone of spacecraft reentry technology, with their selection driven by a complex interplay of mission requirements, thermal properties, and operational constraints. Three primary categories dominate this specialized field. Ablative materials, ceramic tiles, and metallic systems, each offering distinct advantages and limitations that spacecraft designers must carefully weigh. Ablative heat shields, exemplified by materials like PICA, phenolic impregnated carbon ablator, and AVCOAT, represent the traditional approach to extreme thermal protection. These carbon-based composites impregnated with phenolic resins sacrifice themselves by design, charring at temperatures between 260 to 540 degrees Celsius and carrying away enormous heat loads through material vaporization. With heat flux tolerances reaching an impressive 1,000 to 3,000 watts per square centimeter, these materials excel at managing the extreme conditions of high-velocity re-entries such as those experienced during return from lunar missions at 11 kilometers per second. SpaceX's Dragon capsule utilizes PKX, a proprietary variant that benefits from the material's exceptional thermal properties and relatively low density, 0.27 grams per cubic centimeter. However, the inherent single-use nature of ablatives makes them fundamentally incompatible with rapid reusability goals, limiting their application to expendable or occasionally reused vehicles. Ceramic tile systems offer an alternative approach focused on reusability rather than extreme heat tolerance. These materials, typically silica, SiO2, or alumina, Al2O3 based, feature extraordinarily high melting points, 1,700 degrees Celsius and 2,040 degrees Celsius respectively, and exceptionally low thermal conductivity, e.g. Li900, at 0.06 watts per meter per Kelvin. Their extremely low density, 0.14 to 0.2 grams per cubic centimeter, makes them attractive for weight-conscious spacecraft design. While their heat flux tolerance is more modest than ablatives, 100 to 300 watts per square centimeter, their ability to withstand multiple re-entry cycles makes them ideal for vehicles designed for frequent reuse. The Space Shuttle pioneered large-scale ceramic tile implementation, and SpaceX's Starship has adopted a refined approach with hexagonal ceramic tiles. These tiles overcome some limitations of the shuttle's bespoke design, though they retain inherent ceramic fragility, requiring careful integration to prevent damage during the extreme mechanical and thermal stresses of re-entry. Metallic heat shields represent a third category, employing refractory metals like titanium and tungsten, or specialized alloys such as inconel. With high melting points, titanium, 1,650 degrees Celsius, tungsten, 3,410 degrees Celsius, and moderate heat flux tolerance, up to 500 watts per square centimeter with appropriate coatings. These materials offer excellent structural strength and damage resistance. However, their significantly higher density, titanium, 4.5 grams per cubic centimeter, tungsten, 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter, and moderate to high thermal conductivity, titanium, 21 watts per meter per Kelvin, create substantial weight penalties and thermal management challenges. This restricts their application primarily to specialized cases or as elements in hybrid systems. SpaceX's Starship exemplifies the mission-driven approach to heat shield material selection. Its design employs ceramic tiles on the windward side where temperatures reach approximately 1,370 degrees Celsius during re-entry, while using uncoated 300 series stainless steel on the leeward side where temperatures remain around a more moderate 760 degrees Celsius. This hybrid approach prioritizes reusability and operational efficiency while managing mass constraints, critical for a vehicle designed to deliver substantial payloads to orbit while maintaining rapid turnaround capabilities. 
The hexagonal ceramic tile configuration improves coverage uniformity and simplifies replacement compared to the Space Shuttle's complex arrangement, though SpaceX has needed to refine tile attachment mechanisms and thermal properties through extensive testing. As spacecraft technology advances, we may see further innovation in heat shield materials, potentially including hybrid systems that combine benefits across categories, self-healing ceramics addressing durability concerns, or novel attachment methods improving maintenance efficiency. However, the fundamental trade-offs remain. Ablatives excel at extreme heat dissipation but lack reusability. Ceramics offer multi-mission capability but present fragility challenges. And metallics provide structural resilience at the cost of weight penalties. These inherent compromises ensure that heat shield selection will continue to be tailored to specific mission profiles rather than converging on a universal solution. A testament to the specialized demands of protecting spacecraft during the extreme thermal challenges of atmospheric reentry. With the launch of Starship version 2, the ongoing heat shield experiments aimed at finding a thermal protection system that enables SpaceX to achieve rapid reuse mark a solid step forward for future test flights. Of course, identifying the optimal heat shield material cannot be achieved in just one or two test flights. We need many more. According to SpaceX's plan, they aim to launch up to 25 Starship missions this year. At the current pace, we might see one Starship launch per month or even two per month starting in March, allowing SpaceX to complete around 20 launches. While they may not reach the full 25 launch goal, the high number of flights will provide ample opportunities to determine the best heat shield material to maximize Starship's potential, likely by July this year. So, let's look forward to this breakthrough. Once SpaceX finds the right material for rapid reusability, it will once again redefine what we thought was impossible in spaceflight. And it's not just Starship Block 2, that will achieve this. Starship Block 3, with its significantly larger size, will build upon all these lessons to pursue even greater ambitions, such as reaching Mars and establishing a city there, fulfilling the grand vision of SpaceX and Elon Musk. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.